All right, I'm here at the NASA Johnson Space Center uh, with a pretty spectacular background, which astronauts actually use for training. Um, I'm standing here next to uh, William Stefanov, who is, uh, uh, actually, I'll just let you explain uh, what it is you do here at the Space Center. Well, I, I lead the, the Earth Science and Remote Sensing Unit here at JSC, so we're the group that works primarily with astronauts on the International Space Station. We train them in Earth Science, and we also interact with them on a daily basis identifying interesting areas of the Earth for them to take imagery of. Uh, one of the things that's one of our current priorities is actually disaster response from the International Space Station. So whenever there's a, an earthquake happening, uh, like Hurricane Michael, when that came through, we were looking for opportunities for the crew to take imagery from the space station and then tasking them to do that. You also led a climate-related um, sort of component mm -hmm. here at NASA. What was that? Yes, that was, that was called the uh, Climate Adaptation Science Investigators Work Group. And that was a group that was stood up in NASA to respond to federal mandates for all federal facilities to determine their vulnerabilities to climate change. So this was a group that was formed by representatives from all the NASA centers, and we all had focuses on the individual climate uh, parameters of our own sites. And so we all developed different projects to explore uh, and quantify our vulnerabilities to climate change. And once we had that information in place, and these, these uh, played out as predictions of things like sea level rise, mm -hmm. uh, increased temperatures during the day, increased precipitation rates, we then uh, fed that information to our center operations people at, at each of the centers. And it was specifically designed to feed into their planning processes for sustainability. So sea level rise and flooding were the greatest concern? The biggest concern probably is storm events, storm events tropical okay. cyclones. Sure. Uh, sea level rise it was another another big concern. Hurricane uh, Harvey, how did that uh, Harvey, here? Harvey, Harvey was kind of an interesting situation because uh, when it came, it actually made landfall as a hurricane in Corpus Christi mm -hmm. to the south, pretty far to the south of us, and then it swung back out into the Gulf, regenerated, and sat over us as a tropical storm. It actually mm -hmm. wasn't a hurricane when it was over when it was over Houston, but because the uh, weather stirring currents disappeared, essentially, the storm sat over us and dropped in some areas up to 60 inches of rain over a 36-hour period. It's incredible, and that's that's essentially the same amount of rain that we typically get in an entire year. And it's, it's very similar to what you saw with Hurricane Florence. The same pattern of the storm slowing down mm, and just true. dropping tremendous amounts of rain. Is part of that due to the fact that uh, with the warmer ocean temperatures, we're seeing um, basically a failure of the negative feedback of the cold water getting turned up mm -hmm. as the winds approach the shore? That's part of it. Uh, and I've also I, I've, I've probably seen some of the same research. Mm -hmm. uh, also, just the fact that we're warming the lower atmosphere. We're reducing the temperature contrasts in the lower atmosphere. And that's one of the major producers of these large weather pattern steering currents. Sure. So as those disappear, then you're, you might expect that you're going to have less, less rapid movement of tropical cyclones, which, which we're starting to see in the data now. So those are some of the rover models, or rover designs. The surfaces, they were really designed for the moon. I mean, we can think about them from Mars. What do you say, um, you're a NASA scientist, what do you say to sort of some of the skeptics or naysayers that are skeptical of um, government-funded science? Well, uh, speaking from the perspective of NASA, when peer review operates on both the beginning and end of the process, for someone to get funded through a NASA grant system, uh -huh. they have to go through peer review, which is by scientists in the same discipline, uh, anonymous peer review, specifically to verify that what they're Posing is valid science. It's a valid science question. The methodology they're using is valid, and it meets all of the objective requirements of science. Uh, on the back end of that, after the work is done, the results also go through. It's the same, it's a very similar deal. The, the work is reviewed by another group of scientists who weren't involved in the original work. Uh, they they have to declare any kind of financial uh, problems that they might have or conflicts before they even get a chance to look at the work. Uh, and, and this is how the scientific enterprise has been designed uh, for centuries. And these uh, reviewers are anonymous as well. They're anonymous, and the, the whole point is to make sure that we're not publishing biased or, or flawed science. Um, and uh, I mean, if, you're, if you want to think that there's some, some vast conspiracy uh, in biasing this, well, the, the example I like to put it is go back to the moon program, uh, the Apollo program, where there's a lot of people who believe that we never landed on the moon. It's all, all, all fake. And my reply to that is, well, given given the you know, that humans like to talk, 
uh, you know, you have to think, okay, is it easier to believe that we actually went to the moon and did that, or is it better to believe that the tens of thousands of people who are involved in the Apollo program for decades have all managed to keep their mouth shut for, you know, for all this time? And I think the same philosophy applies to science. You know, it's, yeah. I think it's well said. Thank you so much for uh, showing us around and for chatting with us today. Oh, you're very welcome. I hope the rest of your remainder of your tour goes well. Absolutely. Thank you.